Thanks for watching TCM. I'm Alicia Malone and I hope you're having a lovely Sunday afternoon. Next, we have a film that will make it even better. It's a great comedy from 1949 starring Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy, Adam's Rib. The script came from another wonderful duo, writers Ruth Gordon and Garson Kanan, who wrote with Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy in mind. They play married couple Adam and Amanda, both lawyers who find themselves arguing the opposite sides of a case involving a wife who shoots her husband after catching him cheating. The idea had been inspired by the divorce of actors Raymond Massey and Adrian Allen because a married lawyer couple took on their case on opposite sides and then the lawyers got divorced and married their clients. One night, Kanan and Gordon were driving through a storm, and to calm Gordon's nerves, Kanan asked her to tell him something interesting. Ruth Gordon had worked with Raymond Massey both on the stage and the screen, so she told Gus and Kanan all about his divorce case, which he thought they could use for a project. MGM Green lit the film, and everyone agreed on who should direct, George Cukor. He happily said yes and dove into research, such as attending a trial for a murder case, where he noted how the female defendant changed her look to be softer, perhaps more innocent, and he used that idea for this film. The defendant here is played by Judy Holliday, who at the time was starring in a Broadway production of Born Yesterday to great acclaim. That play was written by Garson Kanan and was set to be made into a film over at Columbia Pictures, directed by George Cukor. But Columbia head Harry Cohn did not want Holiday to reprise her role, so Kanan and Cukor decided to use this role in Adam's Rib as a sort of screen test. And she was so captivating here that she won the part in the film version of Born Yesterday and went on to win the Oscar for it. From 1949, also with Tom Yule, Gene Hagen and David Wayne, enjoy Adam's Rib. The original title for Adam's Rib was Man and Wife, but MGM thought that might be too risque. Also, the character of Amanda was originally called Madeline, but that changed during the creation of the song that Kip would sing about her. Gus and Kanan wrote one song, but nobody liked it, so Catherine Hepburn asked Cole Porter to come up with something. He said no because he said it was impossible to write a song using the name Madeline. Porter suggested the name Amanda instead, coming up with Farewell Amanda, and everyone liked that so much that the character's name was changed. And while Judy Holliday looked self-assured in her first major role as Doris, she was reportedly extremely nervous at the start of filming and kept missing her marks. She worried the crew would think she was the wrong choice, so she gave everyone on set free tickets to see her on Broadway in Born Yesterday. Holiday was acting in the play while also making this film, which, as you can imagine, made for some very long days for her. OK, from Judy Holiday to another star blonde, up next, Marilyn Monroe is opposite Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon in a Billy Wilder comedy from 1959. Keep watching. I'll be back soon. Next on TCM, Some Like It Hot, then... The Muppets take Manhattan, and later, Little Shop of Horrors. Oz gets applause on TCM Today.